What if alien astronomers were looking at our planet? Would they find us? If you are a forgetful person looking for proof that Earth hosts life, this planet offers you an unlimited supply of remarkable phenomena to observe up close. A fossilized shell on a canyon wall, a ladybug eating an aphid on a rose stem, an ant hill in full swing. Little details. The only thing you have to do is get close and look. From the window of an airplane in flight, these small details quickly disappear and then no more ladybugs or bizarre shells. From just a few hundred meters up, everything on Earth that is life becomes virtually undetectable. Once you reach cruising altitude at about 11 kilometers, even identifying the widest highways can become a problem, and the details continue to fade as you ascend into outer space. From the windows of the International Space Station, orbiting at an altitude of 400 kilometers, we might see Rome, London, New York, Los Angeles, or Rio, but only because we know where they are. But we could easily see them at night when they are bathed in the glow of their lights. During the day, contrary to common thinking, we probably couldn't even make out the pyramids of Giza, and we certainly wouldn't see the Great Wall of China, which, although thousands of kilometers long, is only six meters wide, much narrower than American highways. Beyond these, there aren't many other artifacts that are visible from hundreds of miles above sea level. There are, however, plenty of natural phenomena such as hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico, larger icebergs in the North Atlantic, and volcanic eruptions wherever they occur. From the moon, 400,000 kilometers away, New York, Paris, and the twinkling lights of other metropolises cannot even be seen as a faint glint, but we would still be able to observe major cloud systems moving slowly through Earth's atmosphere. And from even farther away? From Mars, at least 50 million kilometers away, our planet's mountain ranges covered in a massive layer of snow and continental lines would be visible with a good amateur telescope. As visible as the red planet's deserts and polar caps are to us. From Neptune, almost 5 billion kilometers away, the Earth is just a tiny dot totally hidden by the glow of the Sun. A famous photograph taken in 1990 just beyond Neptune's orbit but the Voyager 1 probe shows how insignificant the Earth looks from deep space, a pale blue dot as astrophysicist Carl Sagan called it and he was generous. Without the help of a caption, that little dot wouldn't even be noticed. To make the long story short, if the Earth was an exoplanet like many others, so placed light years outside the solar system, would we ever be able to understand that there is life there? And turning the perspective upside down, what would happen if aliens with big brains scanned the sky from their remote locations with their naturally amazing visual organs for their help by optical instrumentation of alien quality? What features of the Earth would they be able to detect? From what could they tell that our planet is a special place worthy of a hopefully friendly visit? Let's go and find out together, shall we? Of course, the color blue would be the first and most obvious feature. Water covers more than two-thirds of the Earth's surface. The Pacific Ocean alone covers almost an entire half of the planet. Any being with the proper equipment and expertise to detect the color of our planet would certainly deduce the presence of water, the third most abundant molecule in the universe. If the resolution of their instruments were high enough, say a dozen times higher than what the James Webb telescope is about to give us, the aliens might see more than a pale blue dot. They would see jagged coastlines, a strong hint that water is in a liquid state. And intelligent aliens would surely know that if a planet contains liquid water, its temperature and atmospheric pressure values must perforce fall within a certain range. 
polar caps expanding and contracting due to seasonal temperature variations could also be detected with visible light. And so could the 24-hour rotation of our planet because land masses with a recognizable profile become visible again after a predictable interval. Aliens would also see major weather events and could readily distinguish cloud-related phenomena in the atmosphere from those related to Earth's surface. But come to think of it, Earth's brightness is one billionth that of the Sun and our proximity to the Sun would make it extremely difficult for anyone to detect us directly with a visible light telescope. It would be like trying to spot a firefly near a very powerful floodlight. So if the aliens have found us, it means that they are probably studying us at wavelengths other than those of the visible. For example in the infrared, where our brightness compared to that of the sun is a bit higher. Or maybe their engineers are coming up with completely different strategies. But the question is… Would they be able to figure out if our planet hosts life? The answer is a no, as big as a house. We have seen before that even from a distance of a few kilometers, signs of life disappear from view almost completely. Even if aliens discover the existence of Earth, their optical telescopes would not be able to reveal anything about what actually happens on its surface, especially in the visible. There are, however, other wavelengths. Radio waves and microwaves, for example, might work. If our listening aliens had something similar to or superior to China's 500-meter radio telescope, then they might notice that our civilization is one of the brightest radio sources in the sky. Try to consider everything that generates radio waves or microwaves. Not only traditional radios but also television broadcasts, mobile phones, microwave ovens, radio controls to open garages and cars, commercial radars, military radars, and telecommunications satellites. We glow with low frequency waves, irrefutable proof that something suspicious is happening in our parts since the small rocky planets in their natural state emit almost nothing in the radio frequencies. We've been sending radio signals into space for about a century. Some, such as television transmissions, are too weak to be easily identified from cosmic distances. But others, the transmission of concentrated radio waves emitted by powerful radio instruments, such as the no longer operational Arecibo, can be easily detected even at a distance of hundreds of light years. So if the aliens listening would turn the equivalent of our largest radio telescope towards us, they could deduce that on our planet there is technology. However, there is a complication. Other interpretations are possible. Perhaps they would not be able to distinguish Earth's signals from those of the major planets in our solar system. Also good sources of radio waves, especially Jupiter. Maybe they would think that we are a new kind of planet strangely active in radio frequencies. Perhaps they could not distinguish terrestrial radio emissions from those of the Sun and would conclude that the Sun is a new type of star that emits intensely in the radio wave band. But intercepting radio waves isn't the only way to stick your nose into other people's business. There is also cosmochemistry. Chemical analysis of planetary atmosphere has become a vibrant area of research in modern astrophysics. As you might imagine, cosmochemistry is based on spectroscopy, which is the analysis of light by means of spectrometer. Using the tools and techniques of spectroscopists, cosmochemists can infer the presence of life on an exoplanet beyond whether the life is sentient, intelligent, or technological. The method works because each element, each molecule, wherever it is in the universe, absorbs, emits, reflects, and disperses light in a unique way. And when light from the planet's atmosphere reaches a spectrometer, it reveals chemical fingerprint-like characteristics. The most visible fingerprints are left by the chemical elements most excited by the pressure and temperature of the environment in which they are located. 
If you are here watching this video, it means you are passionately curious about human spaceflight and the mysteries of the universe. We constantly strive to make videos that excite a curious person like you. So subscribe now and be sure to press the bell notification. Planetary atmospheres are rich in these characteristics. And if a planet is teeming with flora and fauna, its atmosphere will be rich in biological markers, spectral evidence of the existence of life, whether biological, produced by any life form, anthropological, produced by the widespread species Homo sapiens, or technological, produced only by technology. Such glaring evidence would be hard to hide. Of course, unless we were born with spectroscopic sensors already pre-installed to detect our chemical fingerprints, aliens would have to have at their disposal highly sensitive spectrometers. But most of all, they would have to have the opportunity to observe the Earth as it transits in front of the Sun's disk so that they could receive the light that crossing its atmosphere could collect and carry with it all the necessary chemical information. In that way, the chemical elements of the Earth's atmosphere could interact with the light and leave their fingerprints visible to all. But how many of these exoplanets could be aligned with the Earth's orbital plane and thus able to host aliens observing our transits over the Sun? Taking into account a period of 10,000 years, 5,000 in the past and 5,000 in the future, Researchers have identified 2,034 star systems that could have been, could be today, or could be in the future in the right position to detect the Earth by the transit method. According to the researchers, 117 of these systems are within about 100 axial length of the Sun, while 75 of them may have detected us by the transit method since the first radio transmissions to Earth began, roughly 100 years ago. And what elements detected in the spectrum might alarm our extraterrestrial brethren? Some molecules, ammonia, carbon dioxide, water, are abundant in the universe regardless of the presence of life. But still, others may be more reliable, though not absolute, indicators. An easily detectable biomarker, for example, is methane, two-thirds of which on Earth is produced by activities related to human activity, such as the production of fuel oil, rice cultivation, sewage, and also, it seems incredible, but it is one of the most important factors, but the gaseous emissions of farm animals, one more reason to eliminate this barbaric form of exploitation of sentient creatures. Natural sources, which make up the remaining third, include decaying vegetation in swampy soils and termite emissions, at the same time in places where free oxygen is scarce. Life isn't always needed to produce methane, which may also have a geological origin. Lately, astrobiologists have been debating the origin of the methane traces found on Mars and the abundant amount of methane found on Titan, Saturn's moon, where we don't think there are cows and termites, and here, the debate is still open. The most striking evidence, however, would be the presence of oxygen, right? But no. Apparently, recent studies have downgraded its importance as a biomarker. The Earth's atmosphere contains oxygen because it is continuously produced by plants through the process of photosynthesis, and it is the abundance of oxygen that allows living things to thrive on Earth. Oxygen has therefore always been considered an essential indicator for the possibility of finding life on extrasolar planets. However, it is possible that non-biological chemical reactions can lead to the same result. Reactions like titanium oxide, for example, a compound known to be abundant on the surfaces of rocky planets. It is estimated that for a planet that has an environment similar to the Sun-Earth system, the continuous photocatalytic reaction of titanium oxide could produce as much oxygen as is present in Earth's entire atmosphere. In other words, it is possible that a habitable extrasolar planet could maintain an atmosphere with an oxygen richness equal to Earth's, even in the absence of organisms capable of performing photosynthesis. But anyway, 
The clues to discover that on Earth turns intelligent life and technology would not lack really. Just to say one, if aliens would really keep an eye on us, at night they could notice an increase of sodium due to the massive use of sodium vapor street lamps that turn on at sunset in cities and suburbs. In addition, alien astronomers would look at our atmosphere's levels of nitrogen, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and methane. Only life could keep Earth chemically off-kilter enough for all these gases to persist at once. However, Earth may not be so easy to demystify from an alien's perspective. Stars and planets are dynamic. Flares and storms are always happening on stars, which also vomit plasma and coronal mass ejections that could mess with how transiting planets are seen. Then there are the constantly changing seasons on planets that can also throw off observations. And of course, what we expect to see and find on an exoplanet is only a reflection of what is needed for life to flourish on Earth. No one, in fact, knows if there are things out there that survive by breathing poison, when even a few bacteria on Earth can eat rocks and metabolize methane. You have to expect anything.